Hey guys, I'm Drew the Helium Noob. Thanks for watching my videos. Today I'll be going through part two of how to properly install the Rack Wireless 8DBI fiberglass antenna. Before I jump into my setup, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the alerts. That way you get all my content as I release it. I also have a lot of useful links and information posted up on my website. It's heliumnoob.com. So go ahead and check that out. I don't have any sponsors yet, so I want to ask for your support by using my affiliate links that you find on that website and in the descriptions on the, the YouTube videos. Also, if you like my content and want to help me with producing it, please consider donating to my channel through the link in the About My Channel section. I greatly appreciate it. So let's go, noobs. So if you checked out my part one video, I go over the basics of how to install the antenna. Um, through some good feedback with you guys, I wanted to take a second to talk about a couple things real quick. One of the questions I received was asking, what if I want to go higher with my antenna? Can I use a pole or something to make it go higher? The answer is yes, you could technically do that. You know, basically you just swap out your antenna and your brackets, put your pole in, get another set of clamps, put it on top of the pole, you know, and hook your antenna to the top, and then run your wires down. But what you need to consider when you do that is one, the stability of it when it's way up in the air, and the other thing is your DBI loss. So the farther you go from your antenna to your miner, the further that run is, the more DBI loss you're gonna experience. If you go to my website, heliumnoob.com, under step one, there's actually a, a calculator that will help you calculate the loss. Um, all you have to do is put in what style of wire you're getting. So in my case, it'd be LMR 400. You gotta put in the megahertz, which is 915 in the United States. And then you put the length of your run, hit calculate, and it shows you what your DBI loss is. So just keep that in mind if you are gonna try to make this go higher. The other comment, and I thought was good feedback that I got from you guys was, hey man, we can't see the connections you're doing. Your camera's too far away. Hey, that's cool, I can appreciate that. So what I wanted to do is before we run outside and we start putting this thing on the house, I wanted to take it one quick step back, bring you in a little bit closer, run through my bracket connections so you can actually see how I set it up. And then we're also gonna go back and do the lightning arrestor and I'll show you how to make that connection real quick. All right guys, so here is the uh, zoomed in view of the actual clamp system that I have for the antenna. So I just wanted to run through it with, with you real quick so you can see it. Um, so we have a carriage bolt. Now this is a quarter inch by five inch long carriage bolt. That carriage bolt goes all the way through both sets of clamps. You got one clamp, you have one set, two sets. Um, when this carriage bolt goes through, there's actually a washer here and a nut here. And that allows you to tighten this one independent of this one. So we're going to tighten this one down. It leaves you the rest of the bolt hanging out on both sides now. And then you put uh, the actual antenna um, through the second set of clamps. And then you tighten these down. And on, on this side of it, we have a washer, a lock washer, and then also a nut. And once you clamp that down, then that's nice and solid on there. So that's how the brackets actually go together. Um, now what I want to do is, is jump over to, to the lightning arrestor, and we'll show you how we put, put the uh, um, connection on it for the, um, for the ground wire, and then just to kind of go over the lightning arrestor a little bit. Now, in order to make your ground connection to your actual lightning arrestor, there's a couple tools you're going to need. Real simple stuff. You need your um, Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to need a, just a multi-purpose tool uh, for, for stripping or uh, for crimping down on things. Um, so you need your multi-purpose electrical tool. And then you're going to have your um, stripper. Now, these this actually does that as well. This is old school. Pops gave these to me. Um, I've used these for probably 25 years. These things are, are legit. Um, but at any rate, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this connector off of the lightning arrestor. It's just a little screw here. Go ahead and back that screw out. Now, make sure you don't lose that screw. And then there's also a lock washer on it. Um, that's what helps keep the, the connector attached to the, um, to the arrestor so it doesn't back out. Um, we can set the actual arrestor aside. Now what you want to do is you want to take your wire. Now again, this is 12 gauge solid um, copper uh, ground wire. So what we have to do is we got to make our connection to our connector. And then on the other end, we're going to make the connection to the grounding rod. Um, so what, first thing you got to do is you slide it in there, kind of figure out how much you're going to need to take off. And then use your thumb and mark the mark the other end of the connector. And you're going to want to be a little bit less than that. So what you can do is just kind of go like that. Just 
shoots that off like that. Now we're going to put the connector on there and you're going to hold it with one finger like this with your pinch it between your fingers like that. Now on the crimping tool there's actually color codes. So there's different size connectors for different gauge wires. So red is 22 to 18 gauge, blue is 16 to 14 gauge, and yellow is 12 to 10. They make it really kind of simple stupid. The connector's red, that's the one you want to use. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to fit that through there like that. And you're going to use that to crimp down on it. Just go ahead and give it a good squeeze. And then you're going to want to do it in the second spot here. Alright guys, so um, unfortunately uh, sometimes things don't go right. So I just wanted to show it instead of editing it out. just wanted to show it. When I went to crimp this down, I actually broke the uh, plastic thing right off it. And it's a weak connection anyways. So what I what I have is I actually have had a couple of these laying around in the garage. But the setup's a little bit different. So let's take that off. So basically what I got is one of these little uh, clamps like that. A little bit of heat shield like that. Okay, we're going to cut that off. Slide this, slide the heat shield over your wire. Um, kind of save that for later. Uh, it's okay if it slides down a little bit. Um, and then let's put our new, new little connector on there, and see if we can't get a better, better connection here. These ones are a little bit more finicky. But basically what you're trying to do is just get that around there nice and solid. Alright, now once that's on there again, that's on there a little bit better now. We're going to go ahead and slide the heat shield over it. And then take a torch. It's just a simple torch that I have. And we'll go ahead and just kind of heat this up. And complete the connection here. on there nice and good so there you go there's your connection and then we do the same thing where we're just going to put this back onto the arrestor take that little screw And that's how you make your ground connection to your arrestor. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying part two of how to install the Rack Wireless 8DBI fiberglass antenna. While I was editing, guess what showed up? My enclosure. So very soon we'll have part three coming at you with how to actually get this enclosure installed and we'll be one, one step closer to mining HNT. Now back to part two where I head outside and actually shoot a time lapse of me putting up my antenna.
All right guys, so now we've ran the cable down and we got everything installed. Um, so I'll go back over this here in another video, but this black wire here is actually an ethernet cord. It's an exterior coated ethernet cord. Um, and I decided to run my, um, I'm gonna run power of uh, PoE, uh, power over ethernet um, to my actual uh, miner. Now, Eventually, what I, as soon as it comes in, it's still a week or, week or so out, but I'm gonna be putting an outdoor enclosure just underneath the peak uh, where I just installed the antenna. Um, so that's what this is for. So this is actually gonna run back into the house. Um, I don't know if you can see the side of the house. It looks like just, maybe just barely, but um, these are just some old cable or some old satellite cables, um, coaxials. So I'm gonna be pulling these out. We'll fill, get this filled in or whatever, but I'm gonna run the ethernet cord back into the house and then over to my office, kind of where my IT rack's at. Um, that's one of the reasons why I got the uh, the rack wireless uh, miner uh, V2, uh, so that I could do PoE. Um, so that's what that's for. So again, once I get this buttoned up, we'll take this cord, we'll run it through into the house, run it down. I'll do that on a different video. I'll show you the inside of the house uh, connections. Um, but basically, so again, the green wire is the ground, um, comes from the antenna. So we're gonna take this cord, and um, I don't know if you can see it. Um, we might have to zoom in a little bit more. All right, so I got this zoomed in as close as I possibly can. Um, again, this is my ethernet cord here that we're gonna run. So make sure we get these kind of set up properly. Um, here. It seems to want to be in the way, but at any rate, so here's the ground bar. Um, right below it's the ground bar clamp. Um, I tightened it down when I was pounding it in. Um, if you watch the first episode that I did, uh, uh, basically what I was saying is that when you're installing your grounding bar, always put your clamp on first because when you're hitting the top of this, this will actually start to pancake. And it did a little bit. Um, I actually have sand. So I, I built this house about five years ago and they backfilled the foundation with sand. Um, this was one of the easiest ground bars I've ever pounded into the ground. Usually when you start pounding on this and you're going into either clay or whatever else you got, this ends up pancaking over um, like a, uh, almost looks like a nail, if you will. Um, and then at that point, it's it's next to impossible to get your get your clamp on it. Um, so I always tell people that little trick I learned. Yes, I learned it the hard way. Um, you got to, you, you got to put your clamp on first. Anyway, so we back the clamp out a little bit. Uh, that way we got a little bit of room. And the idea is that the grounding bar goes in and you're, grounding wire goes between that nut or excuse me that's that, that uh, bolt and the actual bar um, so what we'll do is we'll kind of run our, our wire down try to get it out of the way as much as we can here kind of like that get some tension on it um, and then we'll cut the final size
what I'm going to attempt to do is kind of make a loop in it. Let's see what that does. There we go. Alright, let's give it a little something more else. Something more to grab. Bend it in half. Like so. Alright. Let's try it like that. Let's try it till we bend. Give it a little more surface to grab on. All right, so that's hooked up now. Let's kind of get this pushed down back out of the way. Try to get this groove if I can. Let's get it in that groove. There you go. Now we're grounded. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, watching the second part of, of getting the uh, Rack Wireless 8 DBI antenna installed. Um, just to kind of recap, we put it up on the peak of my house and, and ran a ground wire um, as well as an ethernet wire down and around so we can go into the basement um, with the ethernet cord. Uh, that goes back into uh, kind of where my IT rack is at. That way we can run power out to the unit in an outdoor enclosure. That'll be uh, part three, we'll get that going. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then of course that ground wire goes into the ground properly grounded. You wanna make sure that you don't take a lightning trick and you wanna make sure you don't get any static electricity build up and kill your equipment. Um, so once again, check out the website, heliumnoob.com. has all the links for all the equipment that I've used. Um, they are affiliate links. If you don't mind, if you're going to buy the stuff anyways, use my affiliate link. I'd greatly appreciate that. Have a great night. We'll see you on the next one.